Hey guys, this is Emerald Fire. Today I have for you a machine that can quickly and precisely measure the Y coordinate of any number of entities at the same time. It tracks all entities with the scoreboard tag track Y, which I've already given myself. All I have to do is pull this lever, and my elevation in millimeters appears in the sidebar. As you can see, I'm currently standing at Y equals 50. Each block is 1 meter, and each meter is 1,000 millimeters, so my elevation is 50,000 millimeters. When I jump, my Y position updates in real time. This machine runs all its commands in one tick, so my Y position can be recalculated every 20th of a second. As I fly around, you can see that the last three digits in the sidebar match the first three digits after the decimal point in my Y coordinate in the F3 screen. And that's not all. This machine also uses those position values to calculate my Y velocity in real time. Every tick, it subtracts my position from the previous tick, from my current position, to get my speed in millimeters per tick, and then multiplies it by 20 to get my Y velocity in millimeters per second. Here's a bit of trivia for you. The player flies up and down at a speed of 7.5 blocks per second in creative mode, and levitation speed is equal to approximately 0.91 blocks per second times the level of the effect. As I said before, this machine can handle any number of entities at the same time, at least until it starts to make your computer lag. My test subjects today are a villager in a swimming hole and a bat in a box. I'll just press this button to give them the scoreboard tag, and now you can see their annoyingly long IDs being tracked in the sidebar. The one in the 40s is the villager, and the other one is the bat. The positions are being updated at the same speed as before, once every game tick. We can also see their Y velocities. Now I'll explain briefly how this works. At every entity with the tag track Y, it summons an area effect cloud with a duration of one tick, which means all of them will conveniently disappear on their own before the new ones are summoned in the next tick. This machine uses these clouds to perform a binary search on the player's Y position. If you're not familiar with the concept, here's a simple example. Say that you know a player is between Y equals 0 and Y equals 8. This means that they're either above or below Y equals 4. You check, and you find them below it. This means that they're either above or below y equals 2, and so on. However, using the radius and xyz distance parameters of at e only allows integers, so it will be more complicated to find height to the millimeter using those methods. To get around this, each of the area effect clouds are storing their own command success counts in a scoreboard objective, and they try to teleport themselves down by a certain number of blocks for each step of the binary search. If they try to teleport below y equals negative 4096, the command fails, because teleporting above or below plus or minus 4096 is no longer allowed as a 1.10. All the ones that succeed were above that height, so the number is added to their scores. All the ones that fail were not, so nothing is added to their scores. Finally, to get all the clouds back to their corresponding entities, they're teleported back up by the same number of blocks that they're teleported down, and their scores are transferred. This machine can track entities from y equals negative 4096 to positive 4096. It actually goes about 100 blocks higher than 4096, but that's just because of how the numbers come out. If you wanted to, you can make this thing even more precise than millimeters, but it takes about 14 more command blocks for every additional decimal place, and you'll probably never need to be more precise than 1 1,000th of a block anyway. All you have to do to add this to your world is load this structure right here. It will automatically add all the required scoreboard objectives. It even has this handy little sign saying what those objectives are called. To turn it off or on, just power or unpower this chain block down here. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions about this system, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.